Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. This is Ami from Tokyo. Today I would like to talk about why privacy matters are so strict in Japan. The reason behind this topic is that a foreign friend recently asked me why do Japanese people often use food, cat, or dog as a profile picture on Tinder or other platforms like Instagram, Line, Twitter? It can be stressful not being able to see other person's face, especially when using a dating app. However, this topic is crucial for those expanding their business to Japan. Expectations of privacy in Japan are significantly different from other countries. This influences Japanese values and consumer behavior. Let's explore the specific differences. First, let's look at consumer behavior. Japanese people are protective of their privacy compared to other nations. For example, when shopping online in Japan, people read the privacy policy and are reluctant to give their personal data. The behavior is also different when downloading. When I worked in a company, we monitored and compared the actions taken before downloading apps. Japanese users were the most skeptical about unknown apps. Many would research the app name before the downloading the app. They are worried that their personal information might be compromised. In contrast, Brazilian people were the most open to downloading new apps and do not have the same privacy concerns. Additionally, in Japan, iPhones are legally required to make a shutter sound when taking a photo even on silent mode. This measure is not only to prevent public photography, but also to avoid capturing people. When Japanese people hide their identity, they may use nicknames or avatars or put a sticker over their face. In the case of Tinder, a Japanese user would be mortified to be seen on the service by colleagues or acquaintances. Privacy is especially important to Japanese family when posting photos of their children. It's very common to see all children's faces covered with stickers or other elements. This website even tells you how to hide your face in a cute way. Not sharing the child's face aims to protect their future right and prevent parents from freely sharing personal information without consent. Next, let's look at how privacy relates to Japanese culture. The strictness regarding privacy in Japan is connected to Japanese values and social norms. Even before COVID, some Japanese people would wear a mask in public not for a medical reason, but because they feel more comfortable not showing their face. That's why, even after COVID, so many Japanese people are wearing masks in public. Also, Japanese people generally do not discuss personal matters such as income or family matters, except with close friends, and it is considered impolite to ask about such things. Lastly, let's discuss the legal aspect of privacy. In Japan, the personal information protection law was established in 2003. This law defines what information is personal information and how it can be used. Personal information includes not only identifiable information such as names, addresses, and phone numbers, but also biometric information like facial photos and fingerprints, as well as attributes information such as hobbies and preference. When obtaining a personal information, clear purpose and scopes must be defined and the consent of the individual must be obtained. It's worth noting that Japanese privacy protection laws are considered to be even stricter than those of other countries. For example, when the European Union has a general data protection regulation, Japan's laws are known to be even more rigorous. If you want to publish a photo that shows someone else's face, even if they are in the background, you need to obtain their consent or conceal their face and other identifying aspects. To summarize, the prevalence of face concealment culture in Japan is closely related to the cultural and legal aspects of privacy and personal information. Understanding these differences is essential for those considering expanding their business in Japan. On this channel, I will continue to share valuable content for business professionals interested in cultural insight and expanding their business in the Japanese market. 
If you find this topic interesting, please like, comment, and subscribe.